and all. After she's viciously attacked, Patty Duke fights the system to expose the truth. The violation of Sarah McDavid, next on the True Stories Channel. Sunday, October 20th, 1991, will long be remembered as the date of one of the most devastating natural disasters in American history. The fire was so big and it was moving so fast, I was certain that everyone behind me had been swallowed up and, and was probably dead. The Oakland Hills firestorm left 25 dead and over 3,000 homes destroyed. Damage was estimated at over a billion dollars. Where the hell do you think you're going? I just lost my house! Everything! As documented in the film Firestorm, 72 Hours in Oakland, Conchetta and Joe Jorgensen witnessed the destruction firsthand. I saw little puffs of smoke down in the canyon 200 yards below the house, and I thought this isn't right, and so I called 911. Emergency 911. I want to report a fire. Saturday, October 19th, the fire began in the dry eucalyptus trees and brush in a canyon above the Caldecott Tunnel off State Route 24. Following the 911 call, fire officials arrived and tended the fire overnight. But the next day, the wind changed and trouble erupted. Nine o'clock the next morning, the firemen had left the scene down below the house. My son, and his girlfriend decided to take a walk and go see what was going on. And then he saw the fire starting to rage, <laughs> came back and said, get out of here. You could see the fire spreading so fast, so, so rapidly, that there wasn't really any time to think, just time to react. Conchetta, confined to a wheelchair by multiple sclerosis, suffered a panic attack. She stiffened up and slid right out of her wheelchair and and again remember there's fire burning everywhere and she was telling me oh just just leave me here let's go up she did please leave me i said just leave me and get out of here yourself i didn't want to slow him down the way the movie depicted the characters playing was exactly what happened in our case after conchetta was safely away Joe boarded his motorcycle to escape, but found the route blocked by a wall of flame. I instantly figured that up the street the same thing was going to happen, and so I kind of just closed my eyes and dropped it here to gun through the fire. It hurt so badly immediately when I entered the flames, but I fortunately was able to stay in control and then stop my bike at the bottom of the street. Joe received second-degree burns on his back, arms, and face eventually making a full recovery. When the fire ended, the Jorgensons returned to find their home had miraculously been spared. Their neighbors were not so fortunate. When you came down the street, you would see basically the destruction of people's lives. Neighbors that you'd known for 30 years, their homes were gone, there was nothing. Witness the amazing true story of one of the most destructive fires in American history. LeVar Burton, Michael Gross, and Jill Clayburgh star. We followed the rules. This fire is the exception. Firestorm, 72 hours in Oakland. Thursday, April 8th on Encore's True Stories channel. I taught you how to make the bomb, Jerry. I've done nothing wrong. A powerful true story. That's it. Eight o'clock tonight. We're in business. An innocent man. Have you any other alibis? <laughs> I swear to God, I, I know where I was at the time of the point. Trapped in a conspiracy of lies. They're the elite of the IRA, those who carry out the bombings and the shootings. They arrested everybody in the house. Academy Award winner Daniel Day-Lewis. I sentence you to life imprisonment. You shall serve a minimum of 30 years. Pete Postlethwaite. My name's Giuseppe Coleman, I'm an innocent man, and so's my son. And Academy Award winner Emma Thompson. We're talking about a piece of evidence that says they knew all along. We'll get them in court. Just one of the stories about famous figures you'll see all month in the name of the father. 
Friday at 8 on the True Stories channel. New York City, 1930. You live by the knife and the gun. You die by the knife and the gun. One of the mob's most deadly hitmen now has a price on his head. A hundred thousand dollars for Joe Lachey. And the only way out... Never hit nobody that never deserved. ...is to bring down the entire crime syndicate. Charles Bronson, a true story. The Valachi Papers, ripped from the headlines in March on Encore's True Stories channel. The following presentation is rated TV PG. Sarah McDavid. I'm 31 years old. I've been a substitute teacher for two years. On February 15th, I reported to Benjamin Harrison High School. My first job as a regular. Good morning. Good morning. You must be the, uh, the new English teacher, right? That's right. I'm Sarah McDavid. Ah, well, well, welcome. That need a little help? Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. I'm uh, Louis, the custodian. It's good to meet you. Well, this is quite a place, isn't it? Oh, you should have been here years ago when it really was quite a place. Mm. You could eat off the floor. How long have you been here? About 20 years. You're replacing Hernandez, right? Yes. She was in room 213. Mm, I know. I'll, uh, I'll just take this all up to your room while you uh, sign in. Oh, thanks, Louie. See you later. Good morning, Nan. Oh, Miss McDavid. Welcome. Thank you. Dr. Keyes would like to see you, but he's just finishing up a phone call. Oh, fine. Oh, here are your keys. Hey, man, how are you this morning? Mr. Halligan, this is Sarah McDavid. She's replacing Mrs. Hernandez. Oh, glad to meet you. Hi. Hey, did you catch the sun come out this morning? Yes. Most glorious part of the day, isn't it? I used to have a class after school and backpacking and mountaineering. Got cut back like everything else that's good. Oh, I love hiking. Yeah, come by and see me sometime. I'm over in the chem department. Oh, I'll do that. Morning, Ed. Hey, Dr. Keyes. Have you met yeah, our new... Yeah, we just uh... met. Hey, hang in there. That's okay. Come in, Sarah. Good morning, Dr. Keyes. Sarah? Yes, sir. Are you ready for the roller coaster ride? Oh, I sure hope so. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. Would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, that'd be nice. How do you take it? A black, please. If you don't mind my saying so, you look very nice in that color. Oh, thank you. Are you all set? This is the big day. <sighs> Dr. Keyes? I have waited for this day ever since I had a crush on Miss Babcock in the third grade. 
Wanted to be a teacher all my life. I had a feeling about you. That's why I've given you this chance over some uh, others who had a little more experience. I won't let you down. It is going to be rough. You're starting after the term has begun, taking over for one of our favorite teachers, but you can do it. I'm going to try. I'm sure you will. Come in. Good morning, Miss Merriam. Good morning, Dr. Keyes. You've met Ms. McDavid? Yes. Good morning, Ms. McDavid. Good morning, Ms. Merriam. I have your packet you could pick up at the end of the day, your state and federal testing papers, the county and federal forms for impact surveys, and all your ID. Did you want your 10 o'clock PAs? Yes. The anti-litter and the track team tryouts. And, um... Should we announce, Miss McDavid? Absolutely. Kip Leslie is waiting for you. Oh! Miss Merriam, tell her Miss McDavid will be right out. Thank you. You've uh, met Mrs. Leslie? She's the chair in the English department? Yes, and she's also head of the teachers' union. We're trying to do a lot of new things here at Benjamin Harrison, the Committee for Meaningful Change. We've changed the dress code. It's hardly anything anymore. Kids only have to have their feet covered. And we started an anti-litter campaign, which the kids really respond to, develops in them a sense of pride. But there are some teachers around here, troublemakers, who don't seem to see any of the things we're trying to accomplish. Oh, that's too bad. Now, some of them are going to be on you about joining the associations, the union. But I think it's best for you, at least at this point, to be independent. Do what you want. But do me one favor. I owe you at least one. If you have any problems, come to me. I have an open door policy. I consider my teachers to be my friends. and I want you to feel that way. Thank you. And thank you for believing in me. Good luck, Sarah. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Keith. I'd like for you to meet Miss Sarah McDavid. Hello. Brian is the head of security here, the eyes and ears of Harrison High. I need to see you in my office in one hour. Yes, sir. Um, if there's anything that I can help you out with while you're here, then don't you hesitate to give me a call. Okay. Uh, where's Miss Leslie? She'll be back in a minute. What's that? Spower's room for a change. If a kid reaches for his comb, she presses the panic button. Here we go again. Let's go, McDavid. Bye-bye, Nan. Did you sign in yet? Yeah. Good. Good morning, Miss Leslie. Good morning, Kit. Hello, Crowell. Scott Crowell, you are Miss McDavid. Yes. We met briefly last week when you were here for your interview. Oh, of course, Mr. Crowell. Oh, Scott, please, call me Scott. I was named after F. Scott Fitzgerald. In fact, my parents had a dog named Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the boss in? Yes. Well. Oh, Sarah. Welcome aboard. Thank you. So you've never done anything but sub, huh? No. But I have been subbing for two years. Subbing is not like being a full-time teacher. I'll give it to you as the piss. But he will be on the front lines full-time. Hey, 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 come here, come here, Let me see some ID. Who's your homeroom teacher? Do you belong on this campus? Hey, Brian! Brian, Brian, I think you don't belong. Hold it, kid. Hold it. Hold it, that's me. Now, let's go down to the office. Watch out for the don't belongs at the beginning and end of the day. That's when they get on campus. So how long have you known Dr. Keyes? Oh, I never met him before my interview with him last week. Hmm. Why? Never mind, it's done. You've already been hired. Well, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty teed off. You were in my department and you were hired without my being consulted. 
And my nose isn't the only one I would join around here. Well, I'm sorry. I hope you won't hold it against me. Merritt, you are going down the upstairs face again. Sorry, Miss Wesley. You've got Harris this year. Good luck. It's a space case. <laughs> oh, you met Miss Fowler, didn't you, McDavid? I did. I had two friends who were up for the job. Oh, Kit, I'm so upset. I can't believe it. Look at this. Some kids broke into my class and broke all my old 78s. Caruso, Traubel, Lily Palms, a Grace Moore, Flockstock, Melchior. What a shame. I'm going to report to Dr. Keyes. A lot of good that's going to do you. Poor woman. What a terrible thing to have happen. It can happen. Look at this. This glass should have been replaced last week. Tip Kubo, you better get on it. Hey, Chris, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Hey. Frank. What is all this junk doing here? Oh, <laughs> that's mine. Louie brought it up for me. You watched that one. He's one of Key's spies. Really? Now, I know you know a little bit about all this because you have been subbing, but every school is different, right? Right. Okay. This, you can get the office on, but only until three. That is where you get your PA announcements. There's another one over there. Keys loves to make them. He thinks he's Mike Wallace. Okay, this is your emergency button, and it usually doesn't work. But when it does, this red light goes on and the office will hear a buzzer. Now, it won't go off until the office shuts it off, okay? Okay. My daily work schedule was 8.30 to 9.20 AP English. I'm Ms. McDavid, and together we will get through advanced placement English. 9.30 to 10.25 was homeroom. Good morning, this is Dr. Keyes. I hope you all get to know Miss McDavid, who has replaced Mrs. Hernandez in our English department. And I hope you'll all be at Friday night's game. Tickets will be available in the cafeteria. 10.30 to 10.40, nutrition. 10.45 to 11.40, I had my conference period. 11.45 to 12.40, basic English. Sit down, please, those of you who just arrived. Please get to your seats as quickly as possible. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Let's face it. This is no one's idea of a fun class. Am I right? Uh, it's the worst. We're all agreed. But you do have to learn about punctuation and spelling or you'll wind up illiterate. So, I'm willing to strike a deal with you because I know how lousy it is for you to be here from 11.45 to 12.40. So, we're going to make class a game. Oh, yeah. A game. How, you wonder? Well, I won't keep you in suspense much longer. You see before you a jar of marbles. And an empty jar. Now then, when the full jar is empty and the empty jar is full, there will be no homework for a couple of days. Or we'll order pizza and eat it during class. Or I'll teach you how to do some card tricks. Now then. Here's how it works. If you're all on time, a marble. If you raise your hand to speak, a marble. If no one speaks out of turn, a marble. If you know the answer to a question, a marble. And if no one fails a quiz, a marble. Two marbles. 12.45 to 1.15, lunch. The first day I went with Ms. Leslie to the cafeteria. Along. Certainly no one likes it. 1.20 to 2.10, American Lit. And work our way through Faulkner, Updike, 
Cheever, Shaw, Ross. Two ten to three o'clock, English lit. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome aboard. Get your seats as quickly as possible, please. Thank you. In you go. Come on, settle down. Hurry up. Good afternoon. Dr. Keyes here. For those of you who didn't get your tickets for Friday night's game during lunch, they can be obtained at the Phys Ed office. Also, I want to thank all of you for your cooperation in the anti-litter campaign. I'm proud of you. Hello. I'm Sarah McDavid, and I will be replacing Mrs. Hernandez. Oh, hey, how is she? She was the best teacher in the whole dumb place. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what I hear. I'll find out about it for you. All right, let's get it quiet. All right, listen up, please, ladies and gentlemen. I'll make a deal with you. If you keep it quiet, I'll show you how to do some card tricks for the last 10 minutes of class. Okay, settle down, please. Now, you have a lot of work to do. I know that you've already covered Beowulf. We still have Shakespeare, Chaucer, the Cavalier Poets, and Joyce. This can be fun. Oh, yeah? Andy? Yeah. Andy, in my class, you raise your hand if you want to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I should raise both hands. <laughs> Only if it's a bust. Ooh. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Would a couple of you raise the blinds, please? And would uh, Jim pass out the books? How much time do we have left? A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes? Come on, can't you show us something good? Good? You didn't like the little queen dancing the little king? Step right up here, sit in the front row. We'll give you a show for your money. Now, do pay attention. This trick was handed down to the McDavid's from the teeniest little leprechaun. Now, if you'll just pick a card, any card, do not show it to me. Please do show it to your classmates. And as soon as you digested it, please put it back in the deck. We'll sprinkle it with a little Ireland. Now, everyone, please watch my hands very carefully. You will notice that my nimble little fingers never left my nimble little hands. Now, if you will be good enough to spell your name. A. A. N. N. D. D. Y. Why? Oh. Because we like you. Never suspend a kid. Handle it yourself. Don't let them know you can't. Just grin a lot and find a place where they sell antacid pills wholesale. <laughs> bye bye. Wait, where bye -bye. are you going? Home. What? You have to sign out, and Mary has some stuff to give you. Oh. This is Leslie. I've been looking for you. You're looking at me. I'm running for student body president, and Mrs. Hernandez was going to recommend me. Could you do it instead of her? I don't think I should, Pete. I think teachers should stay out of student government. Really, it should be handled totally by you guys. I mean, it is student government, okay. right? I would vote for you if I had the chance, though. So. Good luck, okay? Thanks, I need it. What's going on, man? Hey, come here. Come here, I got to talk to you today. Mrs. Leslie, some of my kids were asking about Mrs. Hernandez today. How's she doing? She's still in a coma. What happened to her? 
Oh, she fell down a flight of steps. At least that's what the office says. <laughs> what is all this? What do you mean, what is all this? It's your first day of school. How'd it go? It was fantastic. Great. I'm glad it's over. <sighs> you know something, honey? I was scared. <laughs> I mean, the one thing I've dreamed about all my life has finally come to pass. I am finally a full-time teacher. Oh, I hope the kids like me. The kids will love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mmm. I have a wonderful idea. Uh, Let's get married. Oh, Eddie, come on, not again. What do you mean, oh, Eddie, come on, not again? <laughs> well, I thought I'd just catch you off guard. You know, first day of school. You feeling so terrific? I would just pop the question and you'd say, yeah, what a terrific idea. Honey, I'm... Maybe someday soon, I, I don't know. I'm just not ready yet to do it again. Mm. Did the NASA thing come through? Uh, not yet. Uh... But it looks good. The uh, New York office said they sent the papers in. And then they sent them on to the Pentagon. To the Pentagon? Yes, the Pentagon. My dear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh. Maybe I'll get you drunk enough to say yes. And Della has just sold her beautiful long hair to buy a chain for Jim's watch. And Jim has sold his watch to buy combs for her hair. So, of all who give and receive gifts, such as they are wisest. Everywhere, they are wisest. They are the Magi. What'd you think? Well, I love it. I think the gift of the Magi is O. Henry's best. O. Henry was the master of the short story. His surprise endings had profound influence on modern short story writers. Now, let's talk about your short stories. Actually, they were quite good. I was very impressed. Well, you all passed, but there was an A. Actually, it was an A+. Plus. Now, I'd like to read to you from that story. If you remember, the uh, assignment was for you to write about your greatest loss. Now, this writer, and you'll notice, I did say writer, not student, because this indeed was written by a writer. You'll find out who it was. Just listen now. It's a story about a child's visit to his dying father. The mother took all of the children with her. Well, just listen. The room had a Lysol smell, like my mother had just washed all the toilet bowls. And I looked at several of the men in the white beds of pain, searching for my father's smiling face. <coughs> I found my father at the same time my kid sisters and my mother did. And they walked out of the room to cry. 
they couldn't look at him. And it was hard for me, too. His eyes looked like the eyes on a fish in a store. And in his nose were pipes and tubes and like a hose in his mouth. He saw me and tried to close his eyes, but I think he wanted to see me a little longer. I looked away, and there at the window, which was dirty, I saw a cocoon that was struggling against the window pane. It kept throbbing to the beat of my father's breathing. <coughs> and then, in front of my eyes, it shook itself out of the cocoon. It was a butterfly. I looked back at my father, who tried to smile at me. The hose fell out of his mouth, and his eyes stared. He shook for a moment and died right in front of me. And I looked quickly at the window. My butterfly seemed to understand about death. He watched a moment and then flew away. I guess, like my father's soul. Now, that is a writer. Penny, would you pass these out to the rest of the class? All right, look, if you have any problems reading my scribbling on the side of the page or you have a question about the grade, just come and we'll talk. Mary? It's a wonderful story. I'm serious. You know, I really loved my father. I could tell. Merritt, I can't stress to you enough how impressed I am with your writing ability. I, I just don't know what to say. You should write a lot. But I don't know what to write about. Well, why don't we get together and talk about it? We could set up some time during one of my conference periods. Who knows? One of these days, you might write a bestseller. Well, thanks, Mrs. McMeek. <laughs> David, thanks. <laughs> Hello, Merritt. Hi, Kip. I've got to hand it to you. I had him last year in American Lit, and he just managed to get by with the D. With a little help. Well, I've been lucky with him. Uh-uh. You got hey, it. Come on. That's not luck. Thanks, Kip. And I hear you do card tricks. Mm. Maybe you can make some of these kids disappear. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. I really like them. Oh, listen. I have got to put my card in this the shop these days. Oh, well, hello, Mr. President. See, you did it. And without old Leslie. Congratulations. Thanks. Listen, we were talking about starting a student drug program here. Not with the NARS, but with some kids from the student body. And I want to start a hotline. That sounds great. Yeah. And it won't cost a nickel. Uh, could you help us out? Maybe talk to Keys about it? Well, why don't you write me up a little something and I'll get someone to do it. If I talk, the whole program could abort before it got started. Okay, I'll do it. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. get over here. Hey, David, mm -hmm. why don't you recommend this to Keys? Let me think about it. Okay. You going to the cafeteria? Uh, no, I brought my lunch. Look, I'm gonna duck in here. I don't think I'd make it the two miles to the faculty lounge. Okay, I'll see you later. Girls, what are you doing in here? Hi, Miss McDavid. Hi. Are you eating in here? Why would you eat in here? It's better than eating in the calf. Oh, what's wrong with the calf? The food is gross, and the place is a pig pen. It's too weird. Oh, well, pick that stuff up and get out of my room. Wait for me outside. I'll be right there. There we go, girls. Why don't you uh, set your things up over there on the floor? I'll be right with you. She's going to turn us in. That's two weeks' detention. Is it with this one? Little flaky. So, who's gonna share something with the owner of this joint? 
I brought an apple and some cheese. That'll be my contribution. One step. There we go. You're not going to turn us in for smoking? Smoking? Well, somebody's smoking. Oh, wow. Well, who wants tea? <laughs> tea? <laughs> okay. What do we talk about? Mm. Oh, come on. People don't just stare at each other during lunch. They make conversation. It's called table talk. Oh, swell. <laughs> what do we talk about? Well, there's no agenda. You can talk about anything you like. Somebody ask a question. And don't make it be me. I ask questions all day long. You marry? Uh, no. Then boy. Yeah. Do you live together? <laughs> yeah. We'll probably get married one of these days. I guess. You ever been married? When I was a kid. Why to break up? Well, we were going in different directions, and uh, I was too young. When you get married, before you know what it is you want to do with your life, it's just not, not the way to go. What's your boyfriend do? Is he a teacher? <laughs> no, he's an engineer with an aerospace firm. Oh, oh engineers are so dull. Oh. Not Eddie. Oh, it sounds dull to me. Mm. Oh, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you decide to live together? Well, he was always over at my place, and it was too small. Was he married? No. Have you ever gone out with a married man? Yes. Oh. My father. Oh. <laughs> hey, do you want to do this again sometime? Well, sure. It'd be neat. Mm -hmm. I honor all major credit cards. Oh. <laughs> Miss McDavid. Sarah. Oh. How's Hello, my daughter and teacher Katie. doing? No complaints, thank you. Good. I love the work, I love the place, I love the kids. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have a complaint. I found this really deep scratch on my car. Oh. And I talked to Miss Leslie about it, and she says that several of the teacher's cars have been vandalized recently. The mouth. No, I'm, I'm really, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, I promise you, I'm going to get into this whole thing about vandalism. Shouldn't be going on at Harrison. I won't tolerate it. So don't you worry about it. All, All right. right. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Jim. Hey, Mike. Mike. Hi, Teach. Michael, it's me. Well, hi. Hi. What a nice surprise. What are you doing here? I came here to meet you. <gasps> oh, I need the principal. Come on. All right. Uh, Dr. Keyes, excuse me. I'd like you to meet Eddie Rodale. Eddie, this is my boss, Dr. Keyes. Nice to meet you, Doctor. I've heard so much about you. Some favorable, I hope. Oh, most of it. <laughs> you have a nice lady here and a good teacher. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye. So, what are you really doing here? What I am really doing here is I had a short day, so I thought I'd come by and try to hustle you into going out to some place special to eat. Oh, Honey, if we do that, we'll grade my papers. Hey, listen. One night out in six weeks is not going to kill you. When it'll do us both good to get out. All right. I don't feel like cooking anyway. Ah. Miss David? Yes, Mary. Yeah. yeah, what's going on? What are you doing tonight? Yeah. What's that? Just about the best gift I ever got. Next to you, of course. Well, you've got it made. They're bringing you presents. <laughs> Sweet, isn't it? And I am so happy things are working out so well for you. You can 
रात You know, one of these days they're gonna find out that jogging is bad for you. Oh yeah. First they're gonna have to find out that's bad for mice. <laughs> I just came from a meeting with Keys about Pete Brady. Yeah, what's up? Remember he had this idea about a drug thing run by kids? Yeah, on a hotline. Right. Well, Halligan spoke to Keys, and Keys says there's no drug problem here at school. He won't even talk about the hotline. <sighs> Practically every school in this country has looted out kids. Well, he must have some reason. Hmm. I mean, he really cares about what happens to the kids in the campus. And it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. And don't you forget that. And you are very forgetful. I happen to not be forgetful at all. Oh, really? Then why were you out here jogging when you promised to drive me home? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> jogging does that to your brain. <sighs> oh, and try not to forget dinner. You and Eddie tomorrow night at my house. We'll be there. I gotta pick up some things at the office. Hey, guess what Eddie wants me to buy with some of the money he's getting from his promotion? What? Contact lenses. Oh, <laughs> oh I've wanted them for so That's long. That's wonderful. Listen, if my car is not a... Hold on. Uh, gentlemen, may I help oh, you? Oh, we don't need no help. Not the now, door please. should have been locked. Oh, uh, listen, let me see some IDs, okay? Oh, hey, go here. Do off. I know you? What's your names and who's your homeroom teacher? What's in that purse, lady? Hey, 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 get hey, security, hey, please. Hey, what do you mean, what's in the purse? Do that. Get off my purse! Man, what's in that purse? Do that. Man, get Brian. Leslie's in trouble. What's going on? Where is Brian? Leslie's in trouble. Brian, Brian, He's on campus in. doing Over. something for Dr. Keyes. Brian, come in. I can't reach Brian. Ring for Louis. That's two bells. I think you dropped something. Thank you for helping in the anti litter campaign. Proud of you. School looks good. I'm impressed. Thank you. We tried. Walt, there's a second slot opening up downtown. Hamilton is finally retiring. That's between us. I won't breathe a word. So. If you still like to move downtown... I would give my eye teeth. <laughs> Unless I'm way off, you won't have to. Now, uh, everyone finally... Mrs. Leslie was involved in an unfortunate incident just the other day. And I want to assure all of you, I will not tolerate any breach of security which endangers a student or a teacher while they're on school property. Now, I've had Louie in my office on the carpet about this, and I can assure you the door problem is going to be taken care of once and for all. Has this been reported to the police? I've been in touch with our own internal security. What about, about the police? This is not a police matter, Mrs. Leslie. We're going to handle this internally. We can and we will. Now, is there anything else? Have a nice weekend. Tiff, you really should get off him. He's got a lot to worry about. You can't expect Look, him... Look, you do your little kissy-kissy crowd, and you'll be downtown yourself before you know it. He talks about doing something about security around here, and I'm out 20 bucks. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not holding my breath. You know, I don't believe our own security people would know it if some kids came in here and carried off the whole school. Oh, oh give me a break, show. Ta-da! Eat your heart out. 
Fantastic. <laughs> Wasn't it uh, Dorothy Parker who said men never make passes at girls who wear glasses? Oh. That's provisor. <laughs> See, men lose their senses over girls in contact lenses. Can you see as well with them? As well? I never knew there was peripheral vision before. But uh, everything is absolutely perfect, except one thing. Yeah, what's that? I'm not married. What did you say? I said I'm not married. Well, so why don't we? Oh, what's the big deal? You're always asking me. I'm tired of saying no. Getting married as soon as school's out. To the engineer? Yes, ma'am. How could you let him spend the money? I mean, spending money on a ring is a really big turnoff to me. How come he didn't get you a car or something? Oh, you, Here's some more papers to hang up. You know, I used to go out with this guy until I found out he was really into cats. That was the <laughs> end. It's a total turnoff. I feel the same way about engagement. Well, I'll tell you what, then, Tracy. When you get engaged, don't get one. I happen to like it. I'm uh, could you give me some room? Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah, let's do it. I just oh. love it when you do those. What? Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Miss Merriam? Miss Merriam? You clowns. Now I have to call the office and tell them it was a false alarm. Miss McDavid? Yes? The office phones have been shut down since 3 o'clock. Oh, of course. Well, Pete, you'll just have to go down and tell them it was nothing. Okay. This is going to be the best room of any open night in the history of school. I can't believe I have a composition and a poem up in the wall. Me with two papers. That's neat, Tracy. My mom never thought I'd be able to write a postcard. And here I've got five stories up. Would my dad have loved to have seen this? Brian! Come in! Brian! What's going on in Mike David's room? Uh, nothing. Someone just bumped up against the button. It was an accident. Okay, but don't let it happen again. Come in, Brian. Come in. I can't reach Brian. It's okay. One of the kids bumped into it by accident. Cancel the light. All right, everybody, gather around. How many of your folks are coming tomorrow night? Mine are. Two. Oh, good. Now, look, be sure to tell them that I'm looking forward to meeting all of them. Well, you better get going. You have a lot of homework to do, and I don't want any excuses for you not being here tomorrow night. Are you coming with us? No, I have a lot of things to do myself. Go on. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. You know, I can't believe I have a poem and a composition on the wall. That's too much. Oh, that's great. You know, I have yeah. a short story. Yeah. My mom has this new boyfriend, so she won't be here. Oh, Miss right. McDavid, something else. See you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Bye, okay. Bye, Merit. Bye, Merit. You want to go for a taco? Well, sure. <laughs> you're going to pay. Tracy, Tracy, you owe me. No, I'm not. You're going to pay. You do. I've got to talk to you. Come here.
Yes? May I help you? I said, may I help you? Are you looking for someone? They've all left. As a matter of fact, I was just leaving myself. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, who is your homeroom teacher? <laughs> Can I see some identification? Don't make no fuss, and you won't get hurt none. If it's money you want, <laughs> it's in my purse, right here on the desk. You just take it and go. Now look, this is very stupid. There's security guards, and they can be in this room in a matter of seconds. It's buzzer. Oh, it's probably one of those kids. One of them bumped into it before. Turn it off.
Brian, Brian, can you read me? Over. Brian? Thank you, Dr. Spandler. We really appreciate this. Yes, I've got it. And you have our phone number. Good. Goodbye. Oh, you poor thing. You're going to be all right. The contact lens stuck in her eye. Here, use this. It's going to be taken care of. I've spoken with Dr. Keyes, and he wants her to see his personal physician. We should take her to the hospital. He wants her to see his personal physician. Can you drive her? Come on, Sarah. Can I call home for you? There's nobody there now. Where were you? I was watching the band. What happened to Miss McDavid? It's been taken care of. She was roughed up a little, but it's over. Forget it. Okay, Miss McDavid, you can sit up now. There you go. Now, are you allergic to penicillin? No. Good, because I'm going to give you a couple of shots as protection against venereal disease. When would I know about that? Well, the test may not be positive for a week to ten days. This is merely a precaution. Doctor, I have an awful headache and I'm very nauseated. That's because you've got a slight concussion. It's normal, really. Uh, I'm going to give you something for the pain. Uh, I want you to... Get some rest. Do you live alone? No. With my fiance. Well, just take it easy and call me in the morning. As a matter of fact, have him call me. Doctor, if there's something wrong, you can tell it to me. I'm not holding any secrets from you, Miss McDavid. I'm not hiding anything. I just thought that he might have some questions and I could reassure him. Oh. Can I get dressed now? Please, and Miss Ross will give you... A your shots and an appointment to see me in a couple of days. Uh, get to see your eye doctor just as soon as you can. You may come in now. Thank you, doctor. Hello, Miss Merriam. This is Dr. Spandler. I'd like to talk to Dr. Keyes, please. Of course. Thank you. Hello, Walter. I've just finished examining her. Was she right? Yes, she was right. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure, Walter. There were pelvic bruises and I found trace... Is she on the pill? She said she was on the pill, so maybe we won't have to face pregnancy. How's her eye? I removed the contact lens, and although there's no loss of vision, there is a large hematoma. Anything else? She's got a hairline rib fracture, and I've given her a tranquilizer. No, I do not have to file a police report. You know I appreciate it. You're always welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Come in. Oh, the room was a mess, but I cleaned it up. And I found this on the floor. What was she doing in there with the door unlocked? How could she be that careless, alone? Why did this happen in my school? Miss Merriam, downtown cannot 
know about this? You'd better call Nan. She knows the whole thing. You'll get her number for me. You must believe there are times like this when I ask myself, what the hell am I doing in education these days? When I started out, my chief concern was the art of teaching. I had a professor who used to tell us, good teacher affects eternity, he never knows how far his influence will go. I used to think that teaching was a chance to lift ordinary people into a kind of grandeur. You see, nowadays a teacher is a cop. That's what I am. I'm, I am a cop. Just let me get downtown, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. There's just too much to deal with out here. Okay, Miss Miriam, you were getting me Nan's number, and uh, I'll need McDavid's, of course, and my wife. I think we should tell her that I'm going to be late. I'll be back after the meeting. I don't want to talk about it. The principal sent me to his doctor. He wants you to call him. No, he's going to call you, I think. I don't know. My contact lens was stuck in my eye. I think it's going to be all right, but I have to go to the eye doctor tomorrow. I'll take it. What did the police say? I didn't go to the police. Oh, sir, how could you not go right to the police? Dr. Keyes said he'd handle it. Dr. Keyes? What? I, I don't understand. What do you mean he's handling it? Eddie, he's handling it. Please! I mean, was he a student? Was he just some punk who walked in off the street? I don't know. I told you. Animals! Animals! Oh, I'll find him, I swear. I swear I'll find him. And when I find him, I'll kill him. Oh, Eddie, please. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. How, did, how did you get home? A girl from school brought me. You should have called. I knew you'd be home soon. Oh, God. Eddie, I can't sit. I can't stand. I can't lie down. It's going to be all right. I have to take another shower. Um, would you get me something to drink, please? If you had any medication, you shouldn't drink. Uh, or then make it a ginger ale. Oh. Hello? Sarah, this is Dr. Keyes. Oh, Dr. Keyes. I'm so sorry. I am sorrier than you can believe. My doctor was very impressed with you, with, with your courage. Now, the security people have been notified. And they'll want to be in touch with you in, in the next few days. I really don't feel like talking to anyone for a while. I, I understand. Sarah, if I own internal security people handle this, you won't be subjected to the embarrassment of going over the whole thing with the police. Now, if that's the way you want it, that's the way we're going to handle it. You don't have to decide anything immediately. Just take your time. Now, if you need anything, just anything at all, I am only a phone call away. Good night, Sarah.
send her some flowers. Fine. And we've got to find Nan some meaningful overtime as soon as possible. Good. Good night. Good night, Dr. Keyes. It's all right now. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. You're all right. You're safe. You're okay. It's all right. Don't touch me. Please don't touch me. Okay. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Okay. okay. You're all right. It's okay. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, oh it hurts. Do you want a pill? Oh, yes. I just don't want to be touched. It's okay. It's all right. Listen, it's okay. I understand. Does that light bother you? No. Leave it on. I'm gonna. I want to sleep with the light on. You uh, caught me in my worst bathroom. You never answer your phone. I don't want you to think I'm a big spender, but these were not special at the market. Key said you were roughed up a little bit. Did they try to get your purse, too? No. Oh, no. Look, um, I really don't want to talk about this kid. You were raped, weren't you? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, Sarah. Was it one of our kids? No. Was... Oh, was he black? No. What did the police say? Well, um, I'm sorry. School security is handling it. Well, what did they say? I haven't heard from them yet. You won't. Dr. Keyes said a report was being filed. Dr. Keyes said that you were roughed up a little bit and he suggested you take a few days off. He sent me flowers. I'm touched. He had me go to his own doctor. Sarah, of course, if you had gone to a hospital, they would have had to report it to the police. Please, Sarah, let me get you to the Board of Education with this. We could really make waves. Kip, will you give me a break? I don't want to make waves. I'm not a wave maker. I'd appreciate it if we could change the subject. All right. Uh, oh, Fowler applied for a transfer. And Scott Crowell 
is going to be deputy area supervisor in the fall. Really? Yes, really. Your kids send me love. Oh, thanks. Give them mine, hmm? That is my first open school night. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of others. I heard a lot of your parents showed up. You won't believe this, but I got my car out of the shop, and <laughs> I got to go pick up my honey, so... Can I come by tomorrow? Would that be okay? Sure. <laughs> Thank you for the plant. Beautiful. You're welcome. Sarah, call me. Why don't we go out for dinner? What do you say? I don't feel like it. Come on. It'll do you good. You gotta start getting out. Not tonight, I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you think? They're lovely. Thank you. Sarah. Sarah, babe, listen to me. You've got to try to get over this. I know it's hard, but you just can't keep dwelling on it. You know what I mean? You can't sit around all day watching TV. I'll be all right. I want you to try to go back to school. Why? Just for a visit. I mean, the other day you said you had to bring some papers back, didn't you? I, I, I don't think I can do that. You've got to try. I, I can't do it. All I am asking you to do is to try. And I'm not saying tomorrow or the day after. Maybe someday soon. You've got to give it a shot.
Come in, Sarah. Dr. Keyes isn't in yet. Oh, please be seated. Thank you. But we've been keeping this for you. Oh. Thank you. You'll never know how sick I've been about this. I've been praying for you. Morning, Dad. Oh, that's Dr. Keyes. Morning, Miss Mario. Good morning, Dr. Keyes. Shara, I'm delighted to see you. Uh, these are the revised budget proposals. Oh, thank you. You shouldn't be back this soon. I beg you. You must take as much time as you need. There's no problem. Oh, don't worry, Dr. Keyes. I just came back to bring in some homework papers and uh, get some things from my class. You should have told me. I would have sent Louie or Brian. That's really all right. I've been wanting to thank you for the beautiful flowers you sent. I'm glad you liked them. I wanted them to cheer you up a little. They did. Good. Good. May I get you a cup of coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Well, I'm going to have one because I have to do something to get my heart started. Sarah, I can't tell you how much you've been on my mind. I mean that. Nothing like this has ever happened at Harrison. Thank goodness. Our safety record has been very good. This has been a shock for me, too. Oh, that I... Oh, it's much better than it was. Good. <laughs> good. When you get back, officially, I think we ought to lighten your class loads. Maybe you should just take the honors classes. Get back to it slowly. Well, that's... That'd be very nice. Thank you. Your boyfriend... Uh... Eddie. Eddie Rodia. Eddie, Eddie, of course. I'm sure this has been difficult for him as well. Must have been. Sarah, I think the way that you're handling this is exactly right. Just letting us deal with it internally. And I'm sure that uh, Eddie feels that that's best for you too, doesn't he? I think so. If he has any questions, any concerns, urge him to call me. Well, he was... We were wondering why we haven't heard from the security people downtown. They haven't called you yet? No. Well, they certainly should have. I'll get Miss Merriam on that right away. Good. If either of you, you or uh, Eddie, would like to talk with someone, it can be very easily arranged. I know counselors, clinical psychologists, psychiatrists, who might be able to give you some insights into your feelings. Thank you. We'll think about it. I was talking about you last night with my wife. She's been concerned about you as well. Maybe in a few weeks, you and Eddie could have dinner with us. My wife would like that. Oh. I can't tell you how good it is to see you back. I really should get to my classroom before the kids do. Good idea. So good to see you again, Sarah. Nan, Nan, would you help Miss McDavid get some things from her room? Certainly, sir. Goodbye, Dr. Keyes. Dr. Keyes' office. lot about you, Sarah. I just wish I'd answer the buzzer when I heard it first, but Miss Miriam Don't said, worry about it, Nan. It wasn't your fault. I know, but I keep thinking about it anyway.
get out of here. Calm down. Calm down. Try to relax. Come on. Sarah, wait. I'll help you. No! Come on, please. It's all right. Sarah! No. 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 Sarah, put me away. No, I'll help you. No. Please. I just have to get out of here. Excuse me. Sarah, please. Mm. Relax. Come on. Take a deep breath. Listen to me. It happens to me. And I, when I get upset, I, I meditate. It helps. Think of something nice, like the mm. sky. Something peaceful. Mm. Take deep breaths. Mm. Come on. Okay. It's okay. Oh. Oh. This was all I ever wanted. I used to dream about a place like this. It was perfect. Now I can never come back here. Um, listen, I, I gotta tell you something, Sarah. Before I came here, I couldn't hold a job. Dr. Keith, he knew about it, but he hired me anyway. He gave me a chance. That was a year and a half ago. That was very nice of him. He doesn't like anybody to know that there's trouble here, you know? But there's so much that goes on here. I tell you, I don't know all of it. But some of the things that they just they keep, keep me up all night. I know I shouldn't tell you this. Merritt, he got hurt yesterday. How? Uh, I was just walking down to the chem office, and these kids started shoving me. Three guys and this girl. Did you recognize them? No. Merritt, look at me. Did you recognize them? No. If you did, you have to tell me. They were, they were running and laughing. And this kid, he hit me. Then that broke your leg? The baseball bat? Oh. Well, what did the police say? Well, Dr. Keith said the high school would file a report. Did you give them their names? No. Why not? Because if I did, things would be much worse for me. It's scary being at Harrison. The only good thing about being here is that I don't have to be there. Could you go get me some water? Sure. Are you okay? They said you had your purse snatched. I'm okay. Merritt, did your mother agree with that school report? She signed it. Huh. Well, have you done much writing since you've been here? No. No? A hospital's filled with stories. I don't want to write. I don't want to do anything. Hey. You can't quit writing just because something bad happens in your life. Miss McDavid? Hmm? I don't want to go back there. Why? You know, my father probably would have never understood that. He used to talk about his high school all the time. And how much he loved it. He used to say those were the happiest days of his life. There's nothing happy at Harrison. It's a zoo. Mm. Not always. It's like what Miss Hernandez said. We have to watch out for ourselves all the time. Mr. Hernandez, no one has ever told me what really happened to your wife. She fell down a flight of stairs. Mr. Crowell from the English department found her. They got an ambulance and they took her to the hospital. I was beaten up in your wife's old classroom. I was beaten and I was raped. Dr. Keyes tells everyone that I was roughed up a little. And that's all. And that your wife slipped and fell down the stairs. And that's all. Is that the truth? Mr. Hernandez. Is that the truth? Some kids 
students. They were running around the halls. My missus went out of her room and they ran into her. She tried to stop them. And they, she said, they just kicked her down the stairs. Mr. Crowell found her and rushed her to the hospital. She was okay. Decided to keep her overnight as a precaution. I sat with her for hours. She told me what happened. I left her late that night. When I got back in the morning, it was eight. I was there at eight. They said there was a change. She was unconscious and she hasn't said a word since. Thanks so much for the flowers. The nurses will like them. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Goodbye. for a whole damn school. I don't know. But calm down, you're getting hysterical. Hysterical? Well, you should have heard my parents on the phone. Don't talk to anyone about this. Now, can you believe it? The older people, I can understand that. Oh, what does that mean? It means I can understand them. Do you feel the same way? Oh, come on, Sarah. I'm sorry, but I'm angry. I cannot believe that Mr. Hernandez never went to the police. And then there's Merritt. Somehow that man Keyes convinced his mother to say nothing about what happened to him. I find that absolutely wait, wait, appalling. Wait, wait a minute. What happened to Merritt? Some kids at school broke his leg with a baseball bat. And his mother agreed to keep quiet about that? She most certainly did. Well, I'm not going to be one of the quiet ones. The hell with Keyes. I'm going to report the rape. I am. I'm going to the police and I'm going to report it. Uh, when you're there, see if you have to use your name. What? Well, you could get your name in the paper. Would that embarrass you? No, no. Of course it wouldn't embarrass me. Just thinking about you. I mean, it could be a lot of publicity. This violence has to stop. And you're going to the police is going to stop it. Of course not. But it might help. Somebody has to speak up. I agree with you, but if you really... Have I what? Have you really thought about how difficult it's going to be to go on teaching if this hits the headlines? I mean, most of the parents today think teachers shouldn't you be You don't about... want me to do this. I haven't said that. But you're thinking it. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm asking you to think about it. Well, I will. You better think about it, too. Well, sir, all I can tell you is there'll be someone there shortly. Oh, you have been waiting an hour. Oh, no, you only called in here 25 minutes ago. I have the log right in front of me. Well, I'll get someone out there as soon as I can. Just stand by. There'll be someone there shortly. All right. All right. Yes, may I help you? 
I want to report a rape. Uh, who's the victim? Me. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, let me see if I can locate one of our women officers to take the report. Uh, please sit down. Why didn't you report this before? It's been three weeks. I had been told that school security was handling it. But it wasn't, right? Right. Have you thought about letting us use your name publicly? Well, what would happen if I do that? If your name's on the police blotter, it's available to the press. But you do have the right to withhold it and remain Jane Doe. You see, uh, I'm not so sure that my boyfriend is uh, very thrilled about people knowing that I was raped. I can understand that. It will make life more difficult for you both. And that's what he said. The situation at your school must not be allowed to continue. Do you realize, Sarah, that you could draw a lot of attention to it by telling your story? Yes? Thanks, Julie. What would you do? Only the woman who's been raped can answer that. Do you want the man who raped you caught? Or do you want him to be free so he can do it again? I want him caught. Do you want the violence at your school to go on unreported to the police? Do you want to take responsibility for more kids, more teachers getting hurt, maybe killed? Well, not just a minute. No, no, listen to me. If you don't speak out publicly and help us do our job, then you're just as guilty as the principal and all those others who help him keep things quiet. I am not against speaking out about the violence in my school. But I'm not sure about advertising that I've been raped. <laughs> you can't do one without the other. Sarah McDavid can tell her story publicly and possibly bring in the rapist. But certainly she can start an investigation into what's going on at her school. Jane Doe can only be a statistic. And I wanted you to know the whole story so that you can see once and for all what is happening at my school and others. Mine is not an inner city school. No one wanted me to come here. Nobody wanted me to talk about it. Not the principal, nor my parents, nor the man I hope to marry. I didn't even want to talk about it to anyone. I still don't. This isn't something that you want to talk about. You try to put it out of your life, but you dream about it every time you close your eyes. But I know now that the reason for bringing this out in the open far outweighs the embarrassment I feel. I want to continue teaching. I love teaching. Statistics don't mean a thing to anyone. Unless, of course, you happen to be one. That's what I am. I'm only one. Thousands of teachers who are assaulted every month in their classrooms. About 125,000 teachers report being threatened with bodily harm every month. More than that are afraid to report it. 41 million children go to school in America. And about two and a half million of them are beaten up on the school grounds every year. That's about 280,000 a month. I have decided to go public, no matter how humiliating it is to be standing here. Hoping to God that I can reach you and make you see what is happening in our schools. I've come here to plead with you to give us a chance to stay alive and be teachers. I beg you, 
to help us to make our schools once again the islands of safety and learning that they used to be and that they should be and that I believe they can be. Thank you. Uh, what is this? Mr. McDavid, can you give us any other acts of violence that we saw in the school? Mr. McDavid, could you please tell us what we'd like to hear something? Ladies and gentlemen of the press, may I have your attention, please? Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. Miss McDavid will answer your questions downstairs in the uh, rotunda. Another meeting is scheduled at this time, and we need the room to be cleared. Please. Sarah. Sarah, today you became a wave maker. Sarah, I'm so proud of you. Must be very happy. Not really. Well, you're the center of attention. You made a statement to the board. You love it, huh? I don't think so. You'll be in the TV news and all the papers in the morning. Must be very proud. I think Miss Babcock would be proud of me. Miss Babcock. Oh, that was your teacher, wasn't it? Well, you know, I wonder how uh, Miss Babcock would feel about the fact that you put us, the school administration, on the cross in front of the media and you never once mentioned the parents. What about them? They've given up on us. They've given up on the kids. They don't pass the bond issues. They don't come to the school events. They never discipline their children. And when they get in trouble, they get lawyers for them. That's not the issue here. You know what's going to happen now? More and more parents are going to take their children out of the public schools because you and people like you have scared them. I was only telling the truth. But you've scared them, and you'll get money. Oh, certainly. To put more locks on the gates. But they'll cut me back on the academic enrichment program. That's right, Sarah. You may get a few more security guards. But they'll take money from me for new textbooks. I'm sorry. You have no idea how sorry you're going to be. Excuse me. Miss McGavin, we, we'd like to ask you a question. Uh, 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 what about the things that are going on in the school? What about the security guards in the school? Mr. McGavin, what do you think? 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 Mr. McGavin, could you give us an idea of what you were wearing on the day of the attack? Would you repeat again, Mr. McGavin, what do you think? Mr. McGavin, what do you think? Mr. McGavin, what do you think?
mother forced to give up her baby discovers the shocking truth behind what really happened to him. A child lost forever, next on the True Stories Channel. They say what we don't know won't hurt us. Every day I get these misrouted cables, the CIA secret mail. And what we are led to believe is right. Details of covert action that have nothing to do with national security. But what have you encountered that which is real and undeniable? Manipulations of foreign press, political parties, whole economies. I mean, it's incredible. Who is to say that you are wrong? I had no idea the extent of the lie. The level of deception. You really want to hurt them? You really want to do some damage? I got a friend in L.A. who works for the government. Not real crazy about the CIA, okay? The deal is, he gets his stuff out, gets it to me, I get it to you. The cops have our house under surveillance! I want out. It's got to stop. I hear us everything! Every cipher, every document. This is my livelihood now, Chris! You can't just take this away from me! Timothy Hutton and Sean Penn in the incredible true story of Christopher Boyce and Dalton Lee, two of America's most notorious spies. I never expected it to go on as long as it has. It's not over, Chris. It's just beginning. The Falcon and the Snowman, tomorrow at 8 on the True Stories Channel. Who taught you how to make the bomb, Jerry? I've done nothing wrong. A powerful true story. That's it. Eight o'clock tonight. We're in business. An innocent man. Have you any other alibis? <laughs> I swear to God, I, I know where I was at the time of the bomb. Trapped in a conspiracy of lies. They're the elite of the IRA, those who carry out the bombings and the shootings. They arrested everybody in the house. Academy Award winner Daniel Day-Lewis. I sentence you to life imprisonment. You shall serve a minimum of 30 years. Pete Postlethwaite. My name's Giuseppe Conn, and I'm an innocent man, so's my son. And Academy Award winner Emma Thompson. We're talking about a piece of evidence that says they knew all along. We'll get them in court. Just one of the stories about famous figures you'll see all month. In the name of the Father. Friday at 8 on the True Stories Channel. In one of mankind's darkest moments, millions were sent to their death. But through the horror, they retained their humanity in a world turned insane. In April, Encore's True Stories channel honors the victims of the Holocaust with inspirational stories celebrating the strength of the human spirit. Mary Steenburgen risks everything to hide a family from the Nazis. Are you prepared to share the fate of your two friends? I can only say that I am prepared for whatever consequences there may be. The Attic, The Hiding of Anne Frank, Richard Chamberlain fights to free thousands of Jewish prisoners. You have no army, no police. Eichmann will kill every Jew in Budapest unless we fight him. Wallenberg, a hero's story. Willem Dafoe is a boxer fighting to survive the terrors of Auschwitz. Fight till one goes down and can't get up. I will win for him. He can bet his life on him. Triumph of the Spirit. Linda Lavin dedicates her life to those orphaned by war. We have no right to care for children this way. I cannot stand by and do nothing. Lena, my 100 children. Rutger Hauer and Alan Arkin lead a daring escape from a Nazi death camp. We must escape. Let the world know what has happened here! Escape from Sobibor. Join us for a special tribute to the heroes of the Holocaust with stories of true inspiration. This April on Encore's True Stories Channel. The BET Movie Channel. All black, all day, our movies. Afros with Afro fist picks, action and drama to comedy flicks. I see all the tricks. Now when I look at the TV, I see me. The BET Movie Channel see movies like Jackie Brown, Nothing to Lose, Money Talks, Love Jones. It's not your regular BET. You have to call to get BET Movie Stars 3 800 
The following presentation is rated TV PG. I don't want to see any dust underneath these lockers, girls. We're having an inspection tomorrow. Stand up straight. Lose the gum pocket. All right, ladies, in your bunks. And that's light out. Chris, will you take over from here? me to say. Come on. Take me back. Oh, Jerry. No. Come Take on, me man. back. Jerry, come on. Hey. Hey. I don't need you. I don't need anybody.
What's out there, Jerry? What do you see? My baby. Is my baby all right? Your baby's fine. You sure? Here. See for yourself. Ooh. That's him. <laughs> Sounds really strong. <laughs> Jerry, the baby's father. Do you even know who it is? What the hell do you think I am? Watch it, Jerry. Watch your mouth. Do you ever see him? Does he come to see you? Not lately. What are you going to do when you get out? Breathe. <sighs> what do you mean? Do you have a place to live? Breathe. Not yet. Well, don't you think breathe? It's time you start thinking about it. We'll manage. You have no means of support, no place to live, and you're a minor. Maybe it's time you start thinking about other options. Like what? Adoption. No. Oh, Mrs. Rory put you up to this, didn't she? Mrs. Rory had nothing to do with this. We, the state, doesn't encourage you girls to keep these babies. I don't give a damn what the state encourages. I'm not a criminal. I know you're not a criminal. You're what is called an incorrigible child. Scoot down. Wait down. My dad's the incorrigible one, not me. Jerry, there are good people out there. Lie back. He'll help me. My dad will help me. Your dad's the one who committed you in the first place. But there are people who will take care of the baby and love it. I love it. I love him. I know what you're trying to make me do, but this baby's part of me, and no one's going to take him away from me. You hear me? No one. Oh, Jerry, look at you. What the hell are you doing here? I missed you. Baby, okay? He's fine. He? Hey, you think it's gonna be a boy? Mm -hmm. Where you been anyway? All this time, you never even called me. Well, I'm here now. All right. I'm gonna take care of you from now on. Hey. You. you don't believe me? Huh? Jerry, I love you. chair by the fire each night and rock our baby to sleep. sentence. You don't want him to get used to your milk if you won't be there for him. Okay, here, here. Prettiest one we've seen around here in a long time. You keeping him? What the hell are you talking about? Of course I am. Hey, honey, don't snap at me. Some don't, you know. Well, I am. Dennis Craig Bucket. In your mind. What in the hell's going on here? I'm not so 
signing these papers. I'm not signing my baby away. You have to, Jerry. We're only thinking about what's best for the baby. What's best for the baby is to be with me. You can't give him a proper home. I'm not giving up my son, Daddy. You don't have any choice. You can't come home, Jerry. Daddy, help me. He can't. He's out of it now. What do you mean? Because of your age, you're awarded the state. Daddy, how could you do this to me? I mean, how could you just let me go like this? Nothing but trouble since the day you was born. Daddy, please help me just this one time. Just one time, Daddy, please. You're wasting your time, Jerry. The baby's father has already signed the papers. Danny signed these papers? Danny signed our baby away? Just sign it and let's get out of here. Then what happens? You can baptize him if you like. And then a foster family gets him first until we can find him a good home. 